The series revolves around the extraordinary life of a 16-year-old girl named Xuan Momo, who loves aliens, space, and the sea. She lives with her mother, stepfather, and stepbrother, Yu Chen. At the start, we see Momo sitting on a boat together with her friend Jingjing. Jingjing tries to encourage Momo not to be sad and sullen anymore. Flash forward to a week ago. Momo's mother enters her room and turns off the cell phone alarm while waking her daughter. She reminds her that Momo's teacher has been calling her frequently because she's always late for school. Momo hurriedly gets ready for school as her mother also shouts for Yu Chen, her stepbrother, to get downstairs for breakfast. Momo gets out of her room and quickly puts on her school shoes. Mom certainly can't just let her go without having breakfast, so she gives her 10 yuan to eat something on the way. Momo agrees as she takes the money and leaves the house. On the way to school, Momo walks while reading A Brief History of the Universe and drinks the coffee she bought. At the same time, three girls from her class with their pretentious style pass by and immediately snatch the book that Momo is reading. They even make fun of Momo, who probably thought reading books would be liked by men. They bully her, saying that only a freak like Momo could read such a boring book to make herself more valuable among boys. Momo begs for her book to be returned and also says that they would not understand the book. Hearing her words, Li Fang, the main bully, becomes irritated and immediately splashes the coffee on Momo's head. Moreover, Li Fang, still not satisfied with bothering our poor heroine, deliberately takes Momo's bag and throws all the contents on the floor before kicking her. Now satisfied, the bullies call Momo a fool, who even has the guts to like Yi Hai Lan, the school's most popular boy. Momo can only squat down while wiping her eyes so as not to cry. At the same time, Yi Hai Lan and his friends pass by on roller skates. He ends up bumping into Momo on the way. The arrogant Hai Lan is annoyed that he ran into Momo, and even scolds her for not watching out properly. One of Highland's friends says that Momo must have done it on purpose as she has a massive crush on Highlan. Momo quickly denies bumping into him on purpose, but Highlan doesn't care at all and leaves straight away, without even helping her up. Due to this incident, our heroine arrives to class late. The teacher immediately scolds her for coming late again, and this was the fifth time this month. The teacher doesn't wait for Momo's answer and instead tells her to submit the assignment from yesterday. Momo hesitantly takes out her homework. Sadly, her papers are all destroyed thanks to the evil bully Li Fang. Seeing Momo's homework like that, the teacher gets even more angry and tells her to stand outside until class is over. It is finally break time and Hai Lan walks out of the classroom, ignoring Momo. Meanwhile, the bullies continue picking on our innocent heroine. The scene then cuts to the basketball court, where Hai Lan, the all-rounder of the school, is playing a basketball match. All the schoolgirls are cheering him on. This is when we're introduced to another main lead, Chi Shan, the belle of the school and the captain of the cheerleading team. Meanwhile, Momo is busy taking photos of Hai Lan playing. The following day in class, the teacher announces that one month from now, she will segregate classes based on exam results. Class division will be based on their rank, so she hopes that everyone will study hard. Hearing the announcement, Momo becomes anxious as she is bad at studies and worries that she might have to split classes with Hai Lan, the topper of the class. That evening, Momo has dinner with her family at a restaurant. Her mom and dad are happy because their shop is running smoothly and making a lot of profit. That's why they can have a big meal like this. And because of that too, they ask what Momo and Yu Chen want. Without thinking, Yu Chen immediately asks to buy a new computer. Meanwhile, Momo, who is determined to be in the same class as Hai Lan, asks to be given private lessons. Her stepfather immediately agrees and even says that all the money would be given to Momo's private tutoring. Surprisingly, this angers Yu Chen and he starts protesting as his dad cared more about Momo than him. He also wonders what is so great about Momo's mother as she was just an aunt from a small county who even brought along her mentally ill daughter. Hearing this, Momo gets angry and hits Yu Chen, but he pushes her roughly. They end up leaving the dinner table and returning home separately. After the fight, Momo goes straight into the room and locks the door. She cries and takes out her secret box. 
The box has a space pattern and inside are pictures of aliens. As she cries, she talks to herself and says that in this vast realm, there must be someone who will understand her. It's just that they're very far away, maybe hundreds of millions of light years away. Just then, she gets a message from Jingjing sending an article about a man named Lin Guo Sheng capturing aliens. Lin Guo Sheng is an extraterrestrial research specialist who works as the head of the Department of the Abnormal Human Research Lab. Momo reads the article and doesn't believe that Guo Sheng can catch aliens. According to her, the alien he captured is extraordinarily powerful, so it would definitely destroy a mortal like Guo Sheng. The following day at school, it is Jingjing and Momo's turn to be the school's radio broadcaster. After giving the welcoming speech, Jingjing plays a song for everyone to hear. Then, the girls chat about Momo's feelings for Hai Lan without realizing that their microphone is on. Momo confides that Hai Lan still continues to ignore her and she doesn't dare to confess her feelings to him. Jingjing immediately lectures her, encouraging her best friend to propose to her crush. Since the microphone is still on, the whole school hears Momo's confession. After a while, Jingjing finally gets a call from a friend mentioning that she hasn't turned off the mic. Panicked, she immediately turns it off, but it is too late. Embarrassed, Momo runs out of the room. Later, Jingjing pays a visit to Momo's house and tells her to officially confess her love to Hai Lan directly. After much encouragement, Momo agrees and decides to approach her one true love. Next, our heroine goes to the arcade where Hai Lan works part-time, but sadly, he rejects her. Back to the present, Momo and Jingjing are in the middle of the sea, talking about how Hai Lan couldn't care less about our innocent heroine. Stressed, Momo decides to immediately dive into the sea with the instructor. While in the sea, she hears a voice that seems to call her by her name from deep down, and even sees a flash of light. Out of curiosity, Momo dives deeper and deeper, leaving her instructor behind. She gets closer to the bottom of the sea and finds an object that shines very brightly. When she holds the object, her body is suddenly covered in light, and not long after, she loses consciousness. After fainting for a while, Momo opens her eyes, which are now glowing. She immediately swims up, and Jingjing is very happy to see her friend back. However, our heroine looks completely different. She isn't the innocent and bubbly girl like before. Her brain is like a computer as she processes all the information that exists around her. But due to the recent change in her body, Momo once again falls unconscious. In the meantime, we are taken to a house with strange equipment, where a person dressed in a white lab coat approaches Lin Guo Sheng and informs him that investigations regarding their research are continuing. Elsewhere, an unconscious Momo is taken to the hospital and given an MRI scan. While asleep, she dreams of her past. It is then revealed that an alien general named Abu Dori from planet Scorpius has taken possession of Momo's body. Due to an enemy invasion on her home planet, she entered into a deep sleep under the sea. And when Momo held the glowing object containing Abu Dori's soul under the sea, the alien entered her body. Next, Momo wakes up and immediately gets out of the MRI machine. She then pushes the doctor away and goes to the roof of the hospital. There, she stands on the ledge and spreads her arms wide, receiving the sun's energy. Unfortunately, it doesn't work on Earth, and she also learns that her mental power is currently draining. By this time, the doctors and guards arrive on the roof and immediately persuade Momo to get off the ledge, thinking that she was going to do something drastic. Momo, who an alien has possessed, is surprised to see the behavior of Earth humans and doesn't understand them at all. She climbs down from the ledge of the roof and sees a doctor administering an injection containing a sedative. With her strength, Momo can see the contents of the injection, so she immediately avoids it. Just then, her parents arrive at the scene and scold the doctors and guards who scared their daughter. Due to energy loss, Momo faints again. In the meantime, Guo Sheng has a man tied up in his strange chair. He has successfully captured another alien. In the next scene, Momo is conscious again and is kept in the ward. She notices she has an IV in her hand, so she immediately scans its contents. In a somewhat robotic way, she tells her parents that the content of this infused water contains only 0.9% sodium and 0.3% potassium, which is not effective for her body. 
Her parents are understandably concerned about her, as the once cheerful and bubbly Momo has turned into a very cold person with a strange voice. Moreover, she doesn't even know how to eat, further worrying her parents. But when Jingjing visits Momo and gives her an ice cream, she immediately gulps it down. Momo then feels sick to her stomach and wonders what is happening. In response, Jingjing tells her to go to the washroom to relieve herself. When Jingjing realizes Momo has even forgotten how to use the bathroom, she grows concerned. Next, Momo drinks the tap water in the bathroom and looks at her reflection in the mirror. At this time, we see the real Momo and Abu Dori, who has possessed her body. The alien then explains to our real heroine that she is Abu Dori, who came from planet Scorpius to this blue planet. She had waited for Momo for 200 million years under the sea. Momo asks why she called her name from under the sea. The alien says that they're part of each other, and Momo's job in this world was to come and wake Abu Dori. 200 years ago, she placed a portion of her power into the ancestor of the human race. Once the science and technology of the Blue Planet would develop, she would be woken up. This power had passed through the bodies of many millions of people. Now, the power is in Momo's body. So, in conclusion, Abu Dori and Momo are the same person, only from different time periods and eras. The real Momo then makes a request before disappearing. She hopes that the alien can take over her tiring life, protect her mother, and also love a boy named Yi Hai Lan as she did. After this, Abu Dori, who is in the body of Momo, comes out of the bathroom. Now, Momo is officially gone and replaced by Abu Dori, meaning Abu Dori has become Momo in this world. A few days later, Momo is finally allowed to go home, where she's warmly welcomed by her family. That night, Momo wakes up from a nightmare. She immediately stands in front of the mirror and determines that this time, she has to think of a way to get back to her planet. With her strength, Momo scans her own body and comes up with the most rational power-up plan for her current body. Like a working machine, her body starts giving suggestions to increase her muscle and mass. Momo immediately makes improvements to her body, but it burns 15% of her strength during the process. Shortly after, Momo is shocked as she learns that just by increasing things a little for her body, her strength is burned up by 15%. And once her strength is finished increasing, Momo looks even more different. She looks stronger. In the meantime, Guo Sheng and his men corner an alien couple. To save his partner, the male alien surrenders himself and buys enough time for her to run away. One night, Momo borrows a laptop from her brother and uses her power to somehow send a message via satellite to her home planet. Unfortunately, it doesn't work. The following morning, Jingjing comes to Momo's house and teaches her how to use a laptop. She also teaches her how to use the camera to record videos. After that, Jingjing announces that she will be bringing in the homework from their class for this week, as Momo is apparently recovering from the diving incident and hasn't attended school since then. Momo immediately answers that she won't be doing the tasks, and neither will she be returning to school. Jingjing is instantly envious, as it's good to be Momo, who doesn't have to do homework and doesn't have to go to school. And also, tomorrow they'll have to do military training, which will be very hard. Surprisingly, when Momo hears about the training, she immediately says that she will be joining. Jingjing is obviously shocked because the old Momo hated physical exercise. The following day, all the students gather at the school, and by bus, they go to the training camp. When they arrive at the site, the military officers blow the whistle for everyone to gather and line up. After taking roll call, the students change into military clothes and proceed with shooting practice. In an instant, Hai Lan uses all of his shooting bullets and finishes first. Arrogantly, he walks towards Momo, who is also shooting, and with his pretentiousness, he tells her to hand over the rifle to him. He even says that the rifle shot is too strong, and a weakling like Momo wouldn't be able to shoot. The alien Momo doesn't react and immediately fires all the bullets. After finishing up, she throws her empty rifle at Hai Lan and leaves. Later, the coach reads out the student's hooting suspension that is counted from the bullet that hits the target value. Much to everyone's surprise, Momo's shooting score is the highest, 100 points, meaning she hit all the right targets. Later, Momo continues to stun everyone during various military drills. 
She even surpasses the records of the officers present there. The army chief is evidently impressed by this young girl's stamina and skills. In the meantime, Guo Sheng catches another old alien lady with the help of the male alien, Li Rong, he had caught earlier. He had promised the alien that he would be spared if he worked under Guo Sheng's command. The alien hunter then drains the mental power of the poor old woman, killing her instantly. This devastates the male alien, and he closes his eyes, feeling guilty. Li Rong demands Guo Sheng's promise to be released, but the sly alien hunter refuses. Since the old woman and Li Rong came from two different planets, their mental power must also be different. If he releases Li Rong, then it would be the same as losing his sample specimen. When Li Rong continues to protest, he is also drained of his mental power. Unfortunately, even Li Rong's mental power, combined with the old woman's, cannot fill the small flask Guo Sheng has in his possession. And because of this, he wants to find more victims. Later, Guo Sheng does some research and finds out about Momo. So he stalks her in the military camp by pretending to be repairing his car. When Momo passes by him, he deliberately knocks over the bricks that support his vehicle, and the car falls on him. After this, he screams in pain. When Momo hears his screams, she immediately turns around, lifts the car, and pulls him out. Guo Sheng then confirms that she too is an extraterrestrial with superpowers. That night, Momo starts recording herself with a laptop camera to keep her daily records on Earth. The following day during break time, Hai Lan is in the cafeteria eating lunch at the same table as Li Fang and Shi Shan. From their table, they can clearly hear people talking about Momo's current prowess. Li Feng evidently doesn't like it, and loudly says that Momo is just a person who likes to seek fame, and recalls her being recently rejected by Hai Lan. She goes on to mention that a girl like Momo, who acts too manly, will not even be liked and wanted by men. Disrespectfully, Li Feng even throws her dumplings at Momo, and tells her to pick it up and eat it. Momo tries to be patient by ignoring the bully, although she is clearly very angry. When Li Feng continues shouting, our heroine finally breaks out and yells at Li Feng, telling her that no one should dare talk to her like that. In response, the bully backfires, reminding Momo how scared she used to be of her. Momo wouldn't even dare to make the slightest sound if Li Feng was around. When the argument reaches a boiling point, Qi Shan and Hai Lan finally intervene and tell Li Feng to stop treating Momo like that from now on. But the evil Li Feng attempts to attack Momo from behind using her food tray. However, thanks to her quick reflexes, our heroine knocks Li Feng down and even puts the dumpling that Li Feng threw earlier into her mouth so hard that the bully falls to the floor. Embarrassed, Li Feng screams in frustration at being humiliated like that in public.